Hey everyone, this news is about yet another data breach. When we talk about data breaches, they often happen through a SQL injection attack. In real-world attacks, it's more common to come across blind SQL injection, which is harder to exploit, but it can still allow attackers to leak things like email addresses and passwords for all users in the application. That means it's extremely critical. Many companies would pay a lot of money to anyone who finds and reports a vulnerability like that in their system. And that's exactly what I'm going to teach you right now. I'm here on the web application I'm going to attack. When it comes to SQL injection, I usually start by looking for search fields on the site because they often take your search string and query the application's SQL database. One way to figure out how the query is made is by opening the browser's developer tools. I'm using Firefox here, but it may look a bit different on your browser. Then open the network tab, leave that open and perform a search normally here. Now look at this, search q equals, that parameter looks a bit weird and the q here is probably short for query. I'm going to paste it directly in the browser's address bar to see what happens. And look at that, it returned a bunch of products. Let's see if I can pass a value to like orange for orange juice. Okay, success. But guys, that alone doesn't mean anything. With SQL injection, we need to use our knowledge of SQL syntax to manipulate the parameter values and try injecting SQL commands to see if the application accepts them. So it's very common to start by testing a single quote to break the string inside the query and a semicolon to try ending the SQL command just to see what happens. This gave us a syntax error, but the error came from SQL itself, meaning our SQL manipulation was accepted. And now we are in the area of blind SQL injection. It's called blind because we can't actually see what's happening behind the scenes. In this case here, we only get the error messages. So we have to keep trying different inputs and analyzing the error messages to figure out the right payload to inject. Now, instead of a semicolon, I'm going to try to use two dashes to try commenting out the rest of the query and see what happens. Now look at that, it worked. This incomplete input error here happened because I broke the SQL query and left some parentheses unclosed in the background. So now I'll try to close the parentheses. First, let me try one. Same error, let's try two. And that worked, it returned all the products. Now, between the parentheses I closed and the dashes that comment out the rest, I can try adding my own query. But I can't just write a new select statement, because the application is already running one. So I use the union operator, which combines the previous select with the new one or write and returns both results together. I'll try first selecting from a table called xxx, which probably doesn't exist. I want to see if I can trigger an error saying the table doesn't exist, which would confirm that my union query is being accepted. It worked and it says that the x table doesn't exist. Now I'll try with the product table, which probably exists. We need to guess its name. Let's see products, top one here. And it worked again and we can see all the products listed. Now let's guess a more sensitive table name, for example, users. And take a look at this. The error is not that the table doesn't exist. It's that the union query must have the same number of columns in both selects. Aha, uh -huh, so that means the users table exists. Now we start testing how many columns the select should return. Now, instead of using asterisk, which selects all, I can just return strings like one and two and so on and see what happens. To be honest, I already know the right number of columns is nine, but let me show you how to test it if I didn't know it. So for example, I try select single quote one single quote because this one is a string, not a number. Same ever, let's try select one and two, which is two columns. Still the same, so let me keep increasing the number of columns until it works. Look, with nine columns it worked, but it returned a bunch of rubbish, like product data, which is not what we are after. Now, how can we remove those products from this list? For this, I will show you a little trick. Since we are injecting into a parameter that searches for products, we can start our payload with a string that likely doesn't match any real product. I'll try xxx again. That way it doesn't return any actual product. Perfect, now it shows what we return in our custom select. But why exactly did this trick work? Because the application's original select statement is probably something like what I'm showing on the screen now. And that select receives the input from the user. That input there is where my payload is going in. 
By replacing the input of my payload, the final query looks like something like this on the screen. So it first searches for the product XXX, then comes the union with my query, and everything after the two dashes is ignored because it's turned into a comment. Okay, now what are those numbers from 1 to 9? They are what we wrote in our select. Now we need to replace those with actual field names from the users table. So now let me think, what fields might the users table have? Maybe mail, let's try it and worked and now we have the email addresses of all users guys that alone would already be worth a big bounty but let's try to take it further for example if there is mail maybe there is password right but before that guys please like this video to support the channel every like helps me a lot really and great we've got the email and password of every user even the admin is here i can keep trying other fields too the more the better let's try name and for example, name doesn't exist in this database and we get an error when the field isn't found so we can keep trying other possible field names here. Now, why do the passwords look like that? That's because they are encrypted. If you'd like me to make a video on how to crack encrypted passwords, leave a comment down below. If enough people ask for it, I'll definitely make it. If you want to try this attack yourself with a safe web app, check out my video, how to create your own hacker lab with Kali and OWASP juice shop, link in the description. Guys, if you like this content, remember to like this video to support the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications and see you next video.